author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. This is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and we're here at the University Bookstore in Bellevue, Washington, with Deborah Dean, author of The Mirrored World. Deborah, welcome to Author. Thank you. So, Deborah, I just uh, finished reading uh, the great sort of mini biography slash article you published in Psychology Today. You wrote for Psychology uh -huh. Today, where you discuss the intersection or the or the the link in a way between faith in the broadest term and creativity and how it affected your life. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well. I think if you choose to be an artist, it's not, logic just has no place there in the decision in the first place. And it's, it's not an easy choice to make to be, to be an artist. And you're really entering into a realm that reason doesn't have dominance. And so when, when I'm talking about faith in the article, I'm talking about not necessarily religious faith, but that that kind of faith in the universe that there's a reason why things happen and that you follow what the path that is given to you even if it doesn't necessarily make sense yeah you really have to get comfortable with not knowing mm, mm -hmm. with surrendering to not knowing mm -hmm. really I, I have friends that are writers that plot out their books and I have one friend, and she's a very good writer. She storyboards every storyboards. moment. Storyboards? Storyboards. I'm not kidding. She's a fiction writer. She's though. a fiction writer. But she knows every moment of the entire novel before she sets out. And I can't do that. I don't, I don't know where the novel is going. I don't really even know what it's about when I start. Now, you, But you have to know, I've always felt that as a writer, you, you may not know what it's about, in, but you have to have a feeling I think within yourself that is asking for expression, mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. Yeah, but you don't know what that is. Yeah, well, I mean, is that right? Absolutely. This this novel is an example because when I finished the Madonnas of Leningrad, the only thing I knew about the next novel was that it would not be set in Russia, <laughs> because I'm not Russian. Right. And and I don't read the language, and it seemed like a lot of chutzpah to do it the first time, and and certainly it would be absurd to do it again, and. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to follow the advice that all creative writing teachers give their students, which is the, the old cliche about writing what you know. Right. And I thought I had a really good idea uh, for a novel set in uh, 1962 World's Fair in Seattle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I started writing it, and it just, it just laid there. It was just like a dead patient on the table. And I had a contract already. And I for could, a novel. For a novel. And I could just feel the, the ticking away. And I had come across, when I was researching the Madonnas of Leningrad, I had come across this uh, footnote, a little tiny story set in 18th century Russia. And I had thought, wow, that's a really interesting story. And that would make a great novel for somebody else. <laughs> for somebody else. And, and so I kept working on the one that I, that I thought was the smart choice. And it turned out not to be smart at all. And I finally followed this crazy path, which doesn't really make any sense. And, and I'm learning to trust that my being smart isn't really the best thing for being an artist. I, I think so. And I have a very, a very strong, rational part of my mind. And I don't say that to brag, because I have had to learn to silence mm -hmm. him and he's definitely a him <laughs> when I'm doing my creative work because he doesn't have a clue. Right, right. He really doesn't, uh, at least I don't think, because there's nothing rational about what makes a story work. Right. Other than you know it does. I'll tell you something. I had, when I gra the day I graduated from college, um, my parents were there, and I wanted to introduce them to my favorite professor. And he said to them, Deborah's better when she doesn't think too much. <laughs> And I was so wounded, and it took me years to start to realize the truth of that. All right, so this is book number three, novel number two. Right. What did you learn writing The Mirrored World that you'll take either to your nonfiction book or to your next fiction work? The main, what was the biggest change between Deborah Dean when she started it and Deborah Dean when she finished it as a writer? 
it's getting easier for me. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. It, um, not in the sense that it's easy. It's not, I, writing is not easy. Not for me, anyway. It's not anyway. supposed to be. But I'm, and this goes, goes back to our t talk about faith. I, I'm getting more comfortable with the idea that I'm going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that right. it will become a book. Yeah. And that I'll, I'll get, that somehow it will come to life. And um, I used to have terrible writer's block. I don't have writer's block anymore. You had terrible writer's block writing when you were doing short stories or trying to write that first novel? When or? I was trying to write the first novel, which does not exist. Okay. Uh, but when I, I was told at one point, I was given career advice that I really had to write a novel. Right. And so I thought, huh, okay, I'll write a novel. And it was the worst year of my life. Yeah. And you know, I would do things like decide that the, sh um, you know, the shower grout really was looking grungy, and I would go with a toothbrush and I would scrub the grout and the shower rather than right. go to my typewriter, my computer, and sit down and write. Were you afraid of the novel, or were you trying to make yourself write a novel that you didn't want to write? Well, I was, I was trying to make myself write a novel when, I, when what I had was a short story. Right. So I was trying to sort of push it to become a novel. And I also was, and I think this is a lot of why we get writer's block, is I couldn't bear to write anything that wasn't right. great. Right. And that kind of, that, that need to, to write wonderfully and beautifully is paralyzing. Now you may have actually in many ways already answered this, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. Okay. I'd like you to finish this sentence for me. If writing, just writing in general, has taught me anything, it has taught me what? Hmm. It's taught me so many things. I, it's hard to choose. It, I think it's taught me to trust myself yeah. or to trust that voice. Yeah, I, that's one of the most popular answers. And I think it's so true. You can't do this without trust. Yeah. And it's funny because the, the trust is not, I don't want to sound, you know, I, I don't like that sort of new agey, you know, Right. trusting myself thing but it really is um, just just sort of that that you know the AA day at a time thing I think you know there's a lot to be taken from AA into writing <laughs> it's as if there's some part of you that knows where you're going but it can't show you the destination yeah it's saying just follow me yeah oh yeah I don't know I don't know what my novels the are little me be about. doesn't know where it's going no um, you know, I don't know what the title is going to be for a long time because right. I don't really know what the center yeah. of the novel is about. I mean, there's yeah. a part of me that does. Right. And I think that's why y you, y when I finished Madonna's of Leningrad, I really did not feel like I had written it. You know, it's a great feeling. Oh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> it just, it felt like this, this gift. And I don't mean that it was easy, like, you know, I was just transcribing as a voice was speaking to me, but it really felt like there was, thing, there, I, the book was so much smarter than I am.